Excuse me. There we go. Got it. Got it. Oh, some American woman's on now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. You're not American, you're Californian. I'm just, I'm just well, actually, I, I identify more as a citizen of heaven, so. Yay. <laughs> I, I was just thinking what Roma said. Um, because this morning before I came on here, I was reading Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. And it said that they all came together. Mm. And through that the togetherness, they were, expe they were they were expecting people. Okay, they didn't, they didn't know what was going to happen, but they, they believed they believe that when they came together, that they were one mind and one heart, certain worshiping the Lord, through that, like Roma said, amazing thing happened. The Holy Spirit came in power like a mighty rush of wind. And I asked myself, I asked myself, but when, help me, when we come together in our church, it's where we are. Do we come expecting, do, do, we, do we come expecting people, expecting the Lord to, 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 do, to do the signs and wonders and miracles? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think sadly often we're a lot more shallow than that because although Christianity is about relationship it can actually take over and that all we want to do is meet with our friends etc and nothing wrong with it but if 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 we're, we're in a danger again going back to David's point about we go to be blessed rather than actually necessarily bless the Lord mm -hmm. and, and you're your remarks earlier i think are, are where it's at that we should be so god-centered that then then what comes out from that mm. is our love to people but you can bypass that and just say you know you, how are you and start talking business or whatever and um, he doesn't get a look in which is sad well uh, i think you're bringing a, a very interesting point there and uh, something which uh, as uh, Scotty was talking as well, and uh, for me as well, one of the things which I have come to learn, I, even though the reasons why I started going into church was different back in the day, but today... You used to go to look, for, to go to look at the girls with me when in church? <laughs> well, that was way back. <laughs> 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 For sure, Ramesh. <laughs> right. Now, one of the things which I fear that very often when people go into church that they can, uh, there, 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 is a, there is a danger, which is if a person goes into church because of a particular pastor or because of a particular friend, right? The danger is that, that the moment that relationship falls apart, mm. you then even want to disconnect with God. Very true. Mm. Right? So there is, a, there is that uh, mind uh, set that you need to be able, you need to have and and the, to come to that realization that you go into church to bless the lord to to have an encounter with him mm. and not because of any particular person mm. who's there yep. or who comes into church that's very true chan and i think i think that's where it's important uh, because I, I have seen so many people like that. They go to church because of a pastor or miracles happening here or miracles happening there. And they never, never are able to uh, build a relationship with the Lord. And that's, that's what uh, 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 a pastor, uh, pa pastoring or being a shepherd is to, to lead people away from you and to lead them to Christ. And to encourage them to uh, encourage the individual to have an individual relationship with the Lord. 
That is paramount. And, and we have to be, as pastors, we have to be very careful because it can easily get to the individual and it can become egoistic. I prayed for him, he got healed. I prayed for his fa family, they were blessed. I prayed, they got a job. You see the way it changes? And, and that's exactly what you're referring to. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's, about, it's not about him, but it be becomes about I. And uh, leading the individual to, uh, to have their individual relationship with the Lord is paramount. <clears throat> there is no, there is no I, I don't see a compromise in that because, uh, because each one of us have to give, to give, give answers on the day of judgment. You know, you, I can't say you said that or you can't say I said that. And, and, you know, so I think in that context, it has to. Okay, guys, I think we are, time is running on us quickly. And any time of prayer before we are, have David share with us. Any prayer request? I have a prayer request to my pastor and his wife. They're both down with COVID. Mm. And the wife is in hospital as of today because she had open heart surgery two months ago. So uh, she's doing okay up till up till day nine, and uh, yesterday and today she's uh, I don't know the details much. But we just said we'll pray rather than ask too many questions. And uh, Pastor, his wife, and the four boys in the house all have got it because all it took was one son working at McDonald's, and then Rory and the whole lot got it. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. on the spot. So. I yeah, just need to pray for Paul and Linda. I, I just really want to pick up on what Peter stimulated here. In fact, what the conversation has stimulated, uh, you know, why we go to church and for us to actually search our hearts as to literally why we go to church. Um, and, and I'm talking about praying about that in the sense that it does have to be the full circle. We do go to adore. We do go to relate. We do go to worship. We do go to be built up and teach and be taught. And it's it's when the, I suppose you call it the fivefold ministry comes together that nothing gets left out. But if we don't look outwards from that and, and actually want to introduce others to the Lord that we are getting to, to know and love and who loves us so significantly, um, then, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a phone call, which I'm going to decline for the moment. Um, I, I think that we're, we're missing the full, um, love of the Lord because it's not just for us so if we're if we're if we stay corralled if we stay in the sheep's pen but we don't go out and um or recognize the shepherd's going to go after the one and leave 99 then there's something that's a bit short-circuiting in why we go to church so it's a little bit of a, a ramble there but I think it would be a good thing to pray about because mm. I think it's been stimulated today mm -hmm. Just wanted to let you know, you know, we prayed for um, for Natasha uh, last week. Oh, yes, yes. And um, yeah. that, that actually the two meetings with the heart, um, the cardiologist and the endocrinologist uh, went pretty well. So the uh, the the thing she has on her, uh, I don't even know how it's called in English, whatever, what? the endocrinologist actually, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, the gland that was there is actually, uh, you know, benign. So uh, they were thinking of actually still trying to remove it because it's full of blood and different things. But apparently they're just going to leave it there. So uh, I just pray that it will reduce, shrink, and disappear on its own. Um, so good news all around. I definitely would like to know how Scotty is doing with his feet. Yeah, well, well so nearly every day I've been falling in surgery and uh, I managed to, praise God, I managed to get uh, through yesterday. and. Um, they couldn't find a letter, and so I kept the phone for a while. And uh, they come back on the phone and they said, that, Oh, yeah, we found the letter and the attachment with it. That you've got to have an MRI scan, and you've got to have a, an x ray. Um, mm. So the answer is Fabrice, um, I um, all I've got to do is I've just got to wait until I get the, the letter from the hospital saying that I've got to go and have the, the x ray and MRI scan. But 
uh, right now is very is very painful. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's pray for that That's as well. Prayer. Anything? Anybody else? Okay, let's pray. I'll pray for Scotty. Father, we come before you this day in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you thanks for this band, this Lord that meets every week. Lord, we thank you and all of us speak of your wondrous love. We all of us speak testimonies and give you glory for your goodness, for your mercy, and Lord, of your favor on each and every one of our lives, Lord. Lord, challenges and mountains may come by our way, but Lord, we thank you that you are the wind beneath our wings, and Lord, that you lift us up. And Lord, as your scripture, that you mount us up like on an eagle's wings, Lord, and Lord, we sail through these situations. Lord, we just surrender our brother Scotty into your hands this day. And Lord, I pray, I thank you for the miracle, miracles that you worked through in his life, through his life, and thank you for the miracle that he is, Lord. We thank you for the miracles that he is, that he is for you. To the society and his friends and the street ministries and every area he works in, God. Yes. And Lord, I just pray for his uh, help from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord. I just pray a blood covering and your mm. healing flow through, Father, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, I pray that every muscle, every bone, every tissue fall mm. in line with the perfect will of God. For Lord, Scotty was made in your perfect image. And Lord, I pray that all of them fall in line with your perfect will. Mm. Fall in line the way you breathe, when you breathe life into him, Father. Mm -hmm. I pray that perfection into his life. And Lord, I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And also we thank you, Lord, for the testimony of Natasha. Mm -hmm. Lord, also lift her up into your presence and thank you for your favor and your protection, Father. In Jesus' name. Oh, and Father, I speak a blessing over the families, the wives and the families of all those present, but all those that are normally on this, uh, this call. But Father, that you would continue to bless the men. Yes. He would continue to stand strong in the face of all the confrontation, all the doubt, that yes. they would be a pillar of strength yes. and a priest in their family. Yes, as Lord. they stand and support their family, as they love their family, as they oh. nurture them and teach them to grow, the children to grow in the knowledge of who you are. And I thank you, Father, that they are not only, these men are not only an example or a testimony inside their family but also in their place of work and their relationship with people wherever they go that they will be known for who they are and it will create it will be like a light that will create questions why are they like that what is it about them and it'll be because of who lives inside them and thank you father that your presence your holy spirit remains in them and is not just a dormant app but has been activated hmm. executed i think when you download an app into your uh, your phone but we don't want to execute we want to activate yes. the mm. holy spirit to be active yeah. in our life mm. that we stand as men not yes. as dominators not as controllers but as servants Whatever strong Lord. servants standing in the power yeah. And authority that Jesus has given us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, um, I, I think my own just being interrupted by a call there is a, a prime example of knowing when something is a distraction and when it isn't and we can be distracted by churchianity and we can be distracted by what seems good and sometimes mm. we just need to ask is it god and lord I, I i know that we've got this amazing story of the good samaritan and along with the, the story of the um the prodigal son you see mm. just the the length and depth of god's love he doesn't want us being religious he wants us to be in relationship yeah, and yes. he will come he will charge towards us um you don't think of god doing that but he will come towards us and fling his arms around us and, mm. and kiss us even when we're not in the right place and yeah he will he will stop and make things inconvenient for himself um when others who are religious might pass by and that's what he's calling us to be and do and yeah. Lord, we do it well sometimes, and other times our flesh rises up, we get soulish, we're tired, we're distracted. And Lord, I ask that wherever those kind of things occur, that you just teach us every time. Mm. Failure is only failure if we keep on repeating the thing that we did wrong. And I ask, Father God, that when we learn from, oh, no, I didn't pay attention to that person. I, I should have been more gracious whatever, that, Lord, that is the way we learn from each other as well. Yes. And I ask, Father God, that just this group goes from strength to strength, not because we want simply to have a bless me club, but because, Lord, we, we literally do learn from one another week by week. If, it, if, it's, if it's not Peter asking the questions, uh, then it's Richard or, or, or whosoever, but everything comes together. For, yeah. for the teaching of us all mm. and i thank you for that we will only really have validity if then there's an outlook going thereafter so i ask father that you um wherever we might be reticent you make us bold you make us courageous and when we open our mouths instead of blathering you fill our mouths with what to say yeah. in jesus name amen, amen. amen. what's your david Okay. Well, it kind of touched on some of the things I was going to talk about earlier when we first started. Um, but um, kind of what should we do in the last days? Uh, we see things are changing. We, uh, we see that uh, the times are not like they used to be. Um, new normal, great reset. There's all sorts of things that are happening. But um, um, a couple of months ago, a brother sent me a video and asked my opinion uh, about the subject. And on this video, there was a young man who uh, had formerly studied the Bible in some Bible school, I don't know where, um, but he was saying he was the first to see the connection between uh, the coronavirus and the first horseman of the apocalypse. And, um, and somehow he saw the crown um, on the, the first horseman being corona and the white horsemen were, were the medical doctors the group of medical doctors and the arrow that he had was the the syringe um and i had to respond to my friends rather delicately and saying that well i really don't see any correlation between the two there are there's a there's a flood of lies and misinformation going around not only in the world but also in the christian world and and just um things are being communicated over and over again uh, um, for don't want to say well maybe it, well basically they're lies because they're not true um, and even if they're not told willfully they're they're still being the misinformation is being spread and we understand that the times have changed and the world is changing politically and economically and technologically and there are signs there are signs all over the world that the powers are moving and pushing for a one world government uh, a one a global monetary system, uh, as we see traces of in, in apocalypse, or sorry, I'm 
that's coming out of um, uh, uh, Italian, Revelation 13. So the question today is, what do we do? What do we do with these times? How do we help people navigate these times? Uh, and God's word gives us so much. He is so good to us. Uh, it's a supernatural book that brings light and truth from the past into the present. And uh, it brings from the, the future into the present and the, back into the future. Uh, for example, there are just many, many prophecies in the Old Testament regarding the first coming of Christ, but there are also many prophecies regarding his second coming. So I've heard a lot of speculation in the last um, oh, 18 months or so, um, speculations and questions about the changes of the past couple of years. Is, uh, are we at the end of the world? Uh, are we about to enter the tribulation? Are we in the tribulation? Is a vaccine seeing the mark of the beast, uh, what should we do in times like this? And um, uh, today I, want, I just want to share uh, the discourse on the Mount of Olives. And this is found in, in, uh, in three Gospels, Gospel of Matthew and Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. And today I want to concentrate on, on Luke 21, uh, particularly through um, between verses uh, 5 to 36. And I don't know if I can take that in there. I can't get that in there. Uh, but if someone wants to, to read that, if uh, someone has that handy, I'll just let you guys read that from Mark, Luke 21, 5 through 36, and then we'll kind of take a look at it. Sorry, I only have King James. I don't think you want that version. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could read it then. It's a lot of more right. I can, go ahead, I, can, I can go ahead and read it. Some of, some, of, some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. And Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one storm will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will come right away. Someone else want to carry on? Though? Yeah, I can. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and pestilence. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all these, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and the prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it therefore in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, and not, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. How about somebody else? Yeah. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance and all and that vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land and wrath 
upon its upon this people and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the time the Gentiles are fulfilled. Can someone take over? And well, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of all distress of nations with the perfect city. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Someone else want to take over? Okay. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. There's one. Someone else wants okay. to say. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Wow. Jesus said a lot to his disciples here, and he said a lot to us as he's saying a lot to us as well. In the Old Testament, we see that many prophecies have two fulfillments, one for the generation of the prophet and one for a future people. And I believe that even here, um, I, I believe that we see that in this prophecy. Uh, now, I don't desire to predict when Jesus will return or when the tribulation will be or when the Antichrist will reveal himself um, or what the mark of the beast will be, because in Acts 1, it says it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So the times of these things are not for us to know, but he yet he still lays them out for us to see the when these things start to get be fulfilled. Now, Jesus has given us information to his disciples and also to us now and direction for these times. And I, and I want us to benefit from these words. Uh, and first, we see there's an order of the events that are going to happen. Uh, we see the first thing is persecution. In verse 12, it says, before all these things, this, or, um, but before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. That's the first thing. Uh, it's not only persecution for Israel, uh, as we see the, uh, being led off to the synagogue, uh, but also for the Gentile, uh, for the courts and before courts and before kings. So, um, and that's because of Christ. And we're not being led off in persecution, at least in where in, in, the, in Europe or, or in America or Australia. Right now, we're not being led off because we believe in Christ as of yet. Uh, but, and why? What is this for? What is the persecution for? There's a reason for that. And that's to give an opportunity to be a witness. And when does it happen? What are we supposed to do? Um, well, we're supposed to, one thing we're not supposed to do is, is med, not meditate on before how to answer. So we're supposed to trust in the spirit, trust in our our Lord and Savior, to give us a, de a, de a defense, as it says in verse 14. We should trust the Spirit for our defenses. Uh, and also, it's very important that we have, in verse 19, it says we should have consistency or endurance uh, and hold on, hold on, don't give up. Because that's very important. That is going to be the way that we are saved through that persecution is by enduring. The second thing we're going to see is deception. Uh, and we see that in verse 8, deception in the name of Jesus or misinformation. Uh, 
So a lot of people will say that Christ says this or Christ says that. Come follow me. We are the true church. That church not the real church. And we see that even happening today. So there's deception happening in the world. There's deception happening in the church. Uh, you know, pay this $10 and you'll get it, a, a, you know, get a, a tenfold or a hundredfold back. Uh, there's still there's deception in the church in the name of Christ. So what is the instruction and counsel for us? Be careful not to be fooled and do not go after them. And how do we do that? How do we be careful? Well, we should know our pastor's voice, our good shepherd's voice, and also his words. Uh, so we need to stay in the word. We need to be in the vine. We need to get that lymph of the Holy Spirit and be in relationship with him and in consistency. And that's going to help us not follow uh, the deception that's going to come and it's going to come even more powerfully in the future. So we see persecutions, then deception and calamities. Uh, calamities, wars, conflicts, earthquakes, famine, heavenly pheno phenomena, uh, etc. Now, what are we supposed to do in circumstances, according to Jesus's word, uh, in verse nine, he says, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Uh, don't be terrified for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. So get three, we see three problems here um, and three solutions given by our good shepherd. We see in the persecutions, we are to trust God for the words and have consistency. When we're faced with Christian deception and lies, look and don't follow them. Know the truth. Look to Christ. Don't follow the deceivers. And then these great terrors and calamities, don't be scared. Don't worry. Um, but know that they're going to happen. Now, the second thing, well, first thing we see the order of these. The second is uh, Jesus is more specific with the sign or the signs that all these things are about to happen. Now, I believe Jesus was speaking to his disciples in, in the present tense in their lifetime, but also to, also to us. In, in the verses from 20 to 24, we see the prophecy of the fall of the temple in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was surrounded and devastated in 70 AD. That's already happened. There was unprecedented torture and calamity uh, was manifest. And I felt that part was manifest. But however, I, I do believe that there will be another similar event, a second and complete fulfilling as described in Revelation, even more serious, where two-thirds of the Jews will be massacred and the other third will be refined, as it says in Zechariah 13.8. It talks about that, which has not happened yet. It has not been fulfilled, and I feel that that will be fulfilled in the, in the Great Tribulation in the last times. Um, now, we understand that in the word that everyone will see the second coming of the Messiah. Everyone will see it. And we have that, that, that technology to be able to do that. Everyone can tune in and watch the Olympics. Everyone can tune in and, um, and probably watch, you know, the, get a camera and it be broadcast worldwide, the, um, the, uh, the Mount of Olives, and then the, the coming of Christ again uh, will be magnificent. But it will also be, create great terror in some people. But before the, his return, the world stage needs to be fully prepared. So the, the stage is being set up for Christ's return. And we see that happening in between verse 25 and 28. Um, uh, we see the signs of his coming, uh, the, or, or you can say the stage is being set. Where, where it reads, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth, distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear, uh, with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. These will be terrifying signs, absolutely terrifying. Uh, the stability of the physical world as we know it will be shaken. The sun, the moon, the stars, the sea, the, the powers of the heavens. And these signs, uh, we're already familiar with the disciples and also the Jewish people. Uh, we see in the Old Testament prophecies that these things were coming. Uh, these were signs becoming the um, before the great judgment on, on the earth and on the world. Uh, we see in Isaiah 13, um, Verse 6 to 13, darkness in the sun, the moon and the stars. We see in Isaiah 24, uh, the earth is upset, abandoned to plunder, without escape, 
uh, the earth staggers or um, um, reels like a drunken man. Uh, we also see in Joel, in Joel 2 and Joel 3. And um, let's see if I can find that. Um, I want to read Joel 2 from the uh, 30. Let's put in Joel 3. Okay, Joel 2. Joel 2, 30. Okay, here we go. Uh, 30 to 32, and it says, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And 32 says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And that's just even in all this calamity and all this judgment the lord even in that moment is going to allow for people to call on his name most will not most will curse him because of the judgments happening but he allows grace even in those difficult difficult times uh, ezekiel 38 it talks about divine vengeance uh, we see these same signs in haggai Zephaniah, uh, and we see this divine judgment before his second coming, before he is revealed, before he comes back. Uh, so we have some time, um, but before that happens, but we also need to be ready for his, um, for when he calls us up. Now, there's, we see and also in Revelation that the judgment on the earth from Revelation 6 to 16, um, we see the seven seals the, the, and, there, and, the, and, the, and the wrath. We see the seven trumpets. We see the seven cups. Uh, we see in Revelation 16 where the sun is going to increase intensity and burn people. And then it will fail in some way where it says it will turn off and there will be, uh, there will be darkness uh, and how scary is that going to be to the people who don't have a grip, have a hold on Christ? Uh, and then in Revelation 16, it says it is done. And there will be a great earthquake where all the mountains will come down and all the, all the islands will be washed away. And I don't know if that means uh, the UK as well, uh, but um, there will be uh, uh, an earthquake like there has never been before on the whole world. And it will be terrible 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 for future sinners uh but for us what hope do we have what about us what are we going to do today now he gave us counsel in what to do and in mark 13 32 and 37 to 37 which is uh, a similar the same talking about the same the olivet discourse he says but concerning that day or that hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father be on guard, keep awake, and pray. For you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servant in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake so jesus is telling us be on guard stay awake watch pay attention what's going on around us um, because there are signs out there pray for strength do the work god has given you use your gifts and then he says stay awake and stay awake so we need to be um present to what's happening in the world uh, we need to understand our place in Christ, what uh, that we have, we are secure in him and we can give others, we can reassure others about these times as well, because things will get worse. I'm not sure how fast, but uh, they are guaranteed to get worse in time. Uh, so we can be assured, be assured, be assured that Christ is with us. And Revelation 16 says, behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, 
so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Mm. So just keep watching, keep walking, keep trusting, uh, because we have Christ with us and in us. And I just wanted to uh, share that with you today. Amen. 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 I'm reminded. Sorry. Go ahead, no, okay, brother. I'm just I'm just reminded when David was speaking. The, um, Psalm 73 comes from mind where David's feet is almost slipped because he saw the envy, he, he saw the the um the prosperity of the wicked and um it wasn't until he went into the house of God that he saw the he saw the end result. Mm. Um and it was it was more terrifying than anyone could ever imagine, and uh, I'm I'm sitting here and saying, Lord, why am I not weeping? Why am I not on my hands and knees weeping for these people out there? Who, it only takes once to <clears throat> to lose a breath, and, and that's it. There's no second chance, you know. And I was reminded of Romans talking about it last week. You know, we we help the Lord. You know, we we are living in the end days. And we see these things. We see the economy. We see it. We see everything that's happening. Um, earthquakes, typhoons, things that you know that are, are coming rapidly. And yeah, for me, for me, I'm talking about for me now. I should be hands and knees and before the Lord, for, because He's coming back. He, he, there's no doubt about it. He's coming back, and people just don't re realize the terror. Of, of, of not accepting Christ in their lives. And so I was just confirming what Romish said last week and what David's saying today is that it's a, terrifying, it's a terrifying thing. But for us, for us who've been saved by the beautiful grace of God, you know, we're, we're privileged people, but there are people up there. I look out my window right now and I, walk, I see people walk by and I say, does that person know you, Lord? Does, does that person know you? Because that person could collapse. And when that person's collapsed, that's, that's it. There's no second chance. You know, so thank you for that. Thank you for that word, Dave. Sorry. Uh, I, I want to pose this question to David and to, and to everyone to get a bit of an understanding on this. Now, the book of Revelations, while, I, while we all agree that the word of God, cover to cover of the Bible, is inspired by God and it's Holy Spirit and it is written and that it is for our correction and for our teaching and for, our, for the good of us. Now, what becomes the importance that only the book of revelations that comes with a blessing for both the reader and the teacher i see it as a um a grace of Christ that allows us to get a peek into what will happen so that we are not um, taken over by fear. You know, he says, in, even in John, you know, just um, fear not because you know, I, I overcome the world. And this is kind of a, a, um, a future event, you know, grace for us to be able to uh, see how Christ is speaking to the churches the seven churches and um, where we can see where we're at in relationship to that. Uh, and also a blessing knowing that knowing the end of the story is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And that is such a blessing because knowing how everything is going to end is a blessing. And you know, that there's times where we just get fed up with this world and we can say, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm ready for the new Jerusalem to come down and I'm ready to live with you. Uh, I'm ready to go. I'm tired. I'm done with this world. It's just, um, it's uh, too hard or, um, or whatever. But it, I, I think it's a, it's a book that gives hope to the Christian. Uh, it's also a book that gives fear to the non-Christian. 
uh, for the, the great and terrible things that are going to come. So in that way, I think it is a blessing uh, for us in uh, maybe not giving the, the details on like Romans does and how to live a Christian life or, uh, but it, it gives us a, an overview of not only the grace, but also the judgment of God that, that will be coming. So God is a, a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. I've been doing a series in uh, in Apocalypse, uh, which in French is like Italian Revolution. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I start to actually love that book more and more as I'm reading it and studying it and 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 trying to actually learn. Uh, what actually struck me is that you know these seven churches were such in such a state, and you know Jesus was just so hopeful that they can actually win the victory. And I was just reminded just last week, um, a pastor, <laughs> a friend of mine in Nice, uh, last year just went out for a you know, cycle ride, his go bike. And um, he was actually, uh, you know, fell off, fell off, bumped his head extremely badly, was brought into a coma and, uh, you know, was in a bad state. But what actually helped him and his wife, because they actually had to go through, uh, you know, obviously a very difficult time, was the fact that that morning when he woke up, God actually gave him a revelation and spoke to him through the word saying, you know, you shall live and you shall not die. And, and, and he had this fresh revelation. He thought, oh, I'll just go and do my cycle, you know, ride and was contemplating on it. And that word actually, I basically changed the whole difficult season they had to go through. And we know that. And I'm like, how does the church, let alone the people that don't know God yet, <laughs> how does the church need to actually have a word for that season? And I think this is what the revelation is about. It will be the revelation of Christ. Christ is coming back and he's going to reveal himself to the whole world. But it is the time when the church needs to actually, you know, understand what revelation as a book actually says to the church. So there's lots of things that the church needs to, you know, get sorted out. And the first thing that really touched me after he talks to all these churches that are such a state, you have chapter four and chapter five, which when I read it, I just go ever so quickly on it, all about the vision of who Jesus is. And, you know, maybe to answer Peter, I just want to have a vision of who Jesus is. I think if the church had a vision of who Jesus is, maybe many, many things will actually not even be debated anymore. Um, you know, just at the picture of the 24 elders that just put their crowns and that's it. So that book is amazing. And to be honest, I knew it. I studied it before, read it. And I, I think due to the context that we're knowing, I think we really have to actually, you know, ask for more revelation from that book. Mm. And not about specifically what's the timing. I agree with you, David. People are focusing on the wrong questions. <laughs> you know, it will come. I don't know when. And we can actually see things coming that are actually telling us it is, you know, about there but i'm not that concerned on on the on the when you know more on yeah. am i ready you know i, yeah, I love exactly that. stay awake yeah. stay awake yeah. <laughs> i want to be awake <laughs> yeah praise god i think time is up gentlemen so uh david if you could lead us in prayer as we close today sure absolutely Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the words that you give us to comfort us, uh, how you spoke clearly uh, with your disciples about the end times and the scary things that would happen uh, and the things that will happen again in the future. But you tell us not to worry because you are with us. You will give us the answers we need. You will provide for us. You are our good shepherd. Father, I just pray that we would be able to prepare our hearts and minds for times like these. Help us to stay awake. Help us to keep watch. Help us to keep using our gifts as you call us to use our gifts. Uh, don't let us get caught up in the times, but help us to get caught up in your love and your compassion and your goodness. And help us to do what you desire in these times, help us to help other people see the need for you and the need for salvation. 
Yes, amen, amen. Watch over us, Lord Jesus. And I just pray for these men that you would keep us whole. Keep us from temptation, Lord Jesus. And I just pray that you would watch over our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our hands as we walk with you and with each other. Yeah. May your grace abound from the throne of God into our hearts and out from us to other people as we seek to help them and love them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, gentlemen, have a good day and be blessed and look forward to seeing you all. Blessings. Next Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Thank you Ramesh. Bye. Thank you, Thank David. you Peter. Bye, Thank, you. Right. Thank you, Peter. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>